Welcome to the Story Howler. This is your host, the Night Wolf. And during this first episode, we will be working on the Gundam Build Fighters Try Fumina Hoshino Model Kit. As well as talking about my ideas for how to start, or I should say reboot, the Hasbro Cinematic Universe. And we will be starting off with the movie that I will call The Commander. Now, imagine as you would an Arctic wasteland covered in snow, mountains in the distance, but a flat plain in front of you, or mostly flat, snow drifting in areas. And in the sky, there's a meteorite coming to Earth, and it's in flames, and you watch as it breaks apart, two large chunks going in different directions, a few smaller ones going other way, as we follow one specific chunk that comes down to the ground and buries itself in this Arctic wasteland. <clears throat> then shortly after, we watch as a single figure moves closer and closer to where the meteor crashed, a little bit of flame perhaps coming off of it and smoldering down to nothing. And this figure makes it to the crater left behind in the snow, seeing that it has burned all the snow and ice away from around it, letting us see solid ground, which also has a bit of a cratering to it. But inside there, we see some sparking parts of what looks to be metallic technology. And this figure starts pulling parts of it out. And what we see on one piece is what will look like a very much damaged logo. And that would be a dis after that, we see the figure gather up a bunch of these parts and put them in a sack made from fur, animal, leather, whatever. The kind of thing that a person would have to wear to survive in the Arctic kind of weather. Although this will not likely be the Arctic, but actually Siberia. But this figure will start walking away and the screen will fade to black. And then as it comes up again, we see some of these parts sitting on what looks like a rocky bench. And the person is using scraps of metal, but also what appear to be organic looking tools to mess with this electronic components. Only after a few seconds to hear the sound of people breaking into the area he's in. And he will exclaim in a language that we do not know that sounds both human and perhaps insectoid asking why the guardians are there and he will be told that he's being taken to the council and they will gather him up and drag him away as well as the electronic parts until finally we are fade to black once more and then enter into another room where we see a group of people surrounding again what looks like a stone table and even if we don't see these all in great relief what we will see is that they all look perhaps like mystical beings a minotaur a naga a harpy uh, perhaps some of the old Egyptian gods as well though they don't look quite right it's more of a they resemble those things more than they look like them if you know what I mean so they will pull this man that had been messing with the electronic gear into this room where they will speak to him and tell him, you have been found guilty of messing with inorganic technology. That is a grave sin here, considering the world we fled many, many eons ago. And you know the punishment for that. And he will be screaming, no, we must learn how to use this technology if we are ever to defeat our enemies. And they will look down upon him and say, so you admit to your guilt, and thus we will go ahead and bring you your punishment. And he will scream, and we will see them bring out a little, what looks like almost an organic whoopee cushion type of a thing. And we will just see him taken off to the side, never really giving us a good look at his face, where we will hear a puff and a scream and he will be taken away. And as he starts to speak again, his words will sound slurred, and we may even hear a little bit of a lisp on certain lettering. 
we will once more find our hero after a fade where he has been imprisoned in a cell and the bars of that cell appear to be of an organic material and he will be joined by a woman who will say my love i have petitioned the council for your release and he will look at her and he will say pythona you know as well as i do that they will not release me they fear the inorganic technology but we must find a way to understand it or all will be lost and she will reply i cannot believe they would be so foolish as to do that of course they are fools they have always been fools and the biggest fool of them all is that globulos he and I were up for the seat at the same time, and yet he holds it, and I do not, and he fears that I will take it from him. And as they speak, guards will once again come in, push the woman out of the way, and grab our hero, and take him away. Another fade will take us back to the council chamber where we will hear them speak, the Minotaur-looking creature, the one who heads the council, and says, we have looked at the technology this fool has grabbed, and now we know that the monkeys are developing the technology much similar to that of the world devourer. And if they go in that route, we will have no chance of ever conquering them. And another council member will say, we have worked long and hard to try to create new minions, new soldiers, new citizens. Ever since we escaped our homeworld through that wormhole, our lives may have been extended greatly, but our ability to reproduce has also declined greatly, and we are slowly dying out. You also notice that members of the council will once again look at this figure and just roll their eyes. And our hero is now brought back to the council chamber where they tell them that they have decided to consider Pythona's proposal and they will allow him to earn his freedom, but to do so, he will be sent out into the world of the, quote, monkeys, where he will be expected to work towards the reduction of their population, making it easier for them to take over when they get their armies rebuilt. So perhaps it would be considered a bit controversial to bring Cobra Law into this story. But I've always thought it was kind of cool in the old G.I. Joe animated cartoon. And bringing Cobra Law in also allows us to perhaps play with more horror elements to the Hasbro Cinematic Universe. Also, we've obviously brought the attention to the fact that the Transformers exist and that they found a piece of a Decepticon crashed into the planet. And that was what he was using. Also, we've talked about the World Devourer or however we wish to phrase that, which establishes that Unicron exists and that these members of Cobra Law know about it. It also establishes that they escaped from Unicron through a wormhole and that they are aliens to the planet and that they want to take it over. So that's where we get a lot of our setup for po potential future movies right there. And I think that works out well. Um, I do know actually that the new comic coming out for Cobra Commander does actually have Cobra Law in it, though I have not actually read it. So I didn't want to do that until after I actually recorded this video because I don't want to be um, um, influenced by whatever the writers and image are doing quite yet. And the next time we see our hero, he is out in the world of the quote monkeys where we find that the level of their technology is much, much lower than expected. And thus, we find him in more of a medieval time period. As it had been mentioned earlier, the lifespans on these Cobra Law citizens has been extended due to the travel through the wormhole, the radiation causing it, also being what caused them to be more barren and less reproductive. So, the first thing our hero, the commander, decides to try to do is release a plague upon the world. So in Europe, he releases the bubonic plague. And it does help, but it does not defeat everything. And as he lives in this world, he puts himself off as being perhaps a leper at times 
or a burn victim, his molted skin, just kind of resembling that of a burn victim. And he often will have bandages across his face or wearing some kind of sack over his head with an eye hole. I think maybe even similar to uh, Jason Voorhees in the early uh, Friday the 13th movies before they gave him the hockey mask. But the idea is that over the centuries that he's wandering the earth, he starts clan wars. And this will be like a montage of things. Uh, so clan wars between different groups or uh, instigating trouble, occasionally trying a virus, maybe. And all in all, maybe it helps reduce the population a little. Maybe it doesn't. Then we will see him at the French Revolution, where he will help to instigate it. And maybe even he will be the one who spreads the rumor of Marie Antoinette saying, let them eat cake, thus uh, causing the peasantry to arise even greater at that point. It is during the French Revolution, however, that we see him start to gain a group of followers, slowly but surely building up his own uh, not quite army, as it is made of men and women and children. But he will take them to an island far in the seas, near the Bermuda Triangle, where it's hard for many to get to. And we will see this island is defended by some sort of a creature, obviously from Cobra Law and their organic technology. And this will be the establishment of what will in the future be known as Cobra Island and the start of his army. We will also see on occasion now, maybe even during some of the montage of earlier battles, Pythona occasionally shows up to run as a messenger visiting our hero. And though the pair occasionally renew their relationship, we will start to see a strain in it as well. And even at some point when they're out in these more medieval times, uh, well, I guess the French Revolution is not necessarily medieval, but we will see that she has a couple of children following her at one point. And this will be important later on. But now we will go again to see more historical moments. We will see him help initiate different wars over the years. Uh, for example, we'll even see him having the ear of Adolf Hitler, Stalin, and the such, knowing full well that by having these men on his side, they will destroy as many people as possible. But it's not just them. He will be also on the ally side talking to them and trying to make plans as well just because he wants to reduce the population as much as possible and war is a good way to do that when plagues do not work and then we will get to a point where we will see him talking to a politician and this politician may look familiar but he will speak to him and he will say you assured me that your brother was on our side with the established order. And the man who he's talking to will reply in a very well-known accent that I cannot do. But he'll say, of course, I thought he was. But he has become quite of a disappointment to myself and our established party. And I hope to do something about that in the future. And we will fade to black. And then we will hear something of a gunshot. And we'll hear the news that the president has been assassinated. And we will once again see this politician along with our hero who will say, well, the hero, the politician will be saying, did you have my brother assassinated? And our hero will be, no, there was no need for him to be assassinated. We were working on controlling him in other manners, using the women around him as our pawns. So you mean to tell me that he was in fact assassinated by that lone nut job? No, that was not him either. We had been watching him. I cannot tell you who it was that assassinated him, only that it was not us and it was not him. And of course, everything will fade again. And then we will go ahead and we will see that some people now on occasion that we see, perhaps in the Senate, the Congress, 
have like tattoos of a cobra on them somewhere hidden on their body usually you know maybe their shoulder or something else as we hit around sometime in the 70s where our hero will make contact with a Scottish corporation and speak to a man using the name Destro. Of course, this is not the Destro we all know, but the one who is the current head of the family, where he will share some of this technology that he has held on to for all these centuries. As he has decided that perhaps using others to work his plans has not worked out as well as he had hoped and soon he will start his own war upon the human race we will also watch as members of cobra help with the development of places like the united nation why wouldn't you want to be part of a one world government attempt so in the 70s he's contacted mars industries. In the early 80s, he will help a small company begin to grow. That company would be Extensive Enterprises. Of course, this would be run by perhaps the grandfather or the father of the future Crimson Twins. And the 80s will end up being the last of the decades we visit in this story. However, we will also see a brief return to Cobra Island where we will see a small military force that had been shipwrecked there looking around. And this group will be attacked by those living on the island. And only one will survive to escape. And we will see him found by an American Navy vessel where he will be brought back to the States. And after a debrief that we do not see, his commanders will come up to him and he will say, Joel Colton, you are the only person to have been able to locate the home base of a group that we believe has been trying to interfere in the world to the point of perhaps attempting to take it over. And we would like to put you in charge of a m small military operation designed to look for this group. It will be mostly unsanctioned we will give you a budget and allow you to pick out your people but be very discreet and they will show him the signs of cobra over the years where even in ancient times there are markings that ultimately look like you can see the evolution of the logo for cobra from something that was kind of um, rough to the not quite the cobra logo we currently know and they will tell him that this group has been operating for at least six or seven hundred years, if not longer, because there has been signs and ancient artifacts as well. And we may even get a comment about how the idea of the Illuminati may have developed from this group. And Joel Colton will agree to do this. During the credits now, we will return once more to Pythona where we will see her run into these two children, uh, younger looking than what they were when we saw her earlier with them in the movie. And we'll see her with them in a small cottage as she has been watching over our hero. And again, we'll see them get a little older here and there before she returns to Cobra La, bringing them with her. And that's when things get kind of ugly, because even though we will see her with them in her own place in Cobra La, she'll come back one day and she will note that they are no longer there. And she will be in a slight panic. And that is when we will see one of the members of the council there to speak with her, telling her, Ah, it was very nice of you to bring us a couple samples of the monkey's current evolutionary form. We appreciate the experimental material. To which she will rush off and we will only see her end up at an area that shows obvious quote scientific work being done and we will see blood there we won't see the children but we will certainly see where things are being disposed of as if the children have already been uh, killed in their experimental process and we will see an angry face on her that she will quickly mask before anybody can see it 
And finally, as just a little end bit after the credits, we will see the rollout of what would be a prototype Hiss tank. So basically, I want to establish again that Unicron exists, but not very many people know about it. It's on the other side of the galaxy. That's the whole point of having the members of Cobra Law come through a wormhole. The wormhole affected their biology, causing them to live longer. I'm thinking maybe a max of 1,500 years, Earth years. And that has also stopped their um, ability to breed as strongly. They are using their technology to try to create new members of their race. Also, the designs of them will be that, again, of mytho mythological beings from Greek mythology and even ancient Egyptian mythology. And the whole idea is, again, they kind of resemble it from afar, but if you get close, like the Minotaur one who leads the council does not look like a Minotaur. When you get really close, it just resembles it from a distance. We also will have established that um, Cobra Commander has been out and about trying to cause havoc in the world during that time. His punishment, of course, if anybody's watched G.I. Joe the movie, and maybe that might not have been made clear earlier, was, of course, that spore that they used to uh, disfigure him. Although I do want us to never actually see what his face looks like uh, before or after. It should always be covered up in some way, shape, or form. Uh, once we get to t times where the technology for movies is advanced to prosthetics, Cobra Commander can start using those as a way to look human and disguise himself. And in this case, this will be the time when we can see the actual actor's face being used. We've got the establishment of Cobra Island and its protector, which would be historically or mythologically considered to be the Kraken of course, and this would also explain a lot of the disappearances of ships and such in the Bermuda Triangle. Also, I, I like the idea of showing that G.I. Joe is just starting to be established then and that they're going to try to keep it as a covert military group rather than an overt one so they can go around the world freely, almost like a Mission Impossible kind of thing, you know. And with that, I think this will conclude our first entry into the Hasbro Cinematic Universe. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of those ideas. And I hope to see you next time when we go over our first Transformers movie, which I will be tentatively calling Transformers Cybertron Civil War. Peace and love.